What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta Health here. On September 2nd, Alexis and I set out on vacation. We decided to cruise on the Royal Caribbean ship Adventure of the Seas to visit Roatan, an island that's part of Honduras, Cozumel, an island that's part of Mexico, Coco Key, which is Royal Caribbean's private island in the Bahamas, and Belize. Trainer life is a grind and vacations are a necessary disconnect for all of us. This is your friendly reminder to book your own vacation to avoid the dreaded burnout that hits so many of us in the industry at one point or another. Anyways, we had a great time on our trip. It was a much needed getaway. About four days into our cruise though, my YouTube senses started tingling. I noticed some trainers walking around the fitness area of the ship and I couldn't help but wonder, what are their lives like? I decided to introduce myself and see if they'd be open to doing a session where I would be asking them questions about their jobs and lives. At first they were kinda like, damn, this dude is weird. But once I said it was for YouTube, they got it. Anyways, in the rest of this video, I'll be sharing footage of the session that the Neat and Blessing took us through, and I'll be giving all of you a ton of insight into what their lives are really like. Before we get into all that, all I ask is that you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. This channel is a free resource for all fitness professionals, and your support is what allows us to keep making content for all of you. Thank you so much for that support, guys. On to the rest of the video. So, again, our two trainers in this session were Vineet and Blessing. Vineet is from India and Blessing is from Zimbabwe. In this session, we had to complete stations such as this one, where we had to do kettlebell swings for 50 seconds. Before moving to the next station, we had to do 40 seconds of cardio. In terms of cardio, you could do whatever you wanted within reason. We mostly stuck to jumping jacks, butt kicks, and high knees for the cardio portions of this workout. Speaking of the workout, it was simple, but pretty effective. Both trainers were very solid communicators and corrected our form whenever we were off. Hey, even if you know what to do, it's pretty easy to slack off on form here and there as you fatigue. Anyways, after getting to know both of these guys a bit, the conversation in our session got around to our training experience and what kind of stuff we've been working on over the years. Alexis and I shared that we run a studio here in Connecticut with six different trainers. Connecticut being close to New York interested Vanit in particular for reasons that we'll get into more soon. Blessing shared that he had completed quite a few certifications in the UK. He definitely knew his stuff, so I'm sure those certifications have served him well. Vineet had a good assortment of certifications as well, including his main certification, which he obtained through ACE about eight months prior to this video coming out. It was at this point in the workout where we realized that he had actually watched my part one and part two study guide videos leading up to taking his exam. After that, we asked both trainers a bunch of hard hitting questions. We started with, how long have you been doing this? Vineet said that he's been doing boxing, CrossFit, and other fitness things for a pretty long time. He's been doing personal training on cruise ships for about two years now. Blessing said that he's been training clients for more than five years. Why did you decide to work on a cruise ship? Both of them said pretty much the same thing. They were hiring, it sounded fun, and it was a way to further their careers. Our next question was, what's training like where you're from? Vineet said that he used to work at multiple facilities in India, and he trained clients in their own homes as well. He really did a fair bit of everything. The more I talked with these guys, the more I realized that training is fairly similar in most places. Where else have you guys done training? Both said that they train clients on smaller and bigger boats. Both of them have also done a fair amount of training in their home countries as well. Do you think you'll always work on a ship? Blessing was unsure, but happy with his current position. Vineet was also happy with his current job, but was also interested in New York City specifically and wanted to become more involved with finance, but also stay active with training at the same same time. We spent a fair amount of time there talking about training as a side hustle versus a full-time career, which is always a good topic to discuss. How do you maintain the trainer lifestyle on the boat? Both guys said they usually work out at nighttime. Surprisingly, the ships do have plenty of healthy options in addition to the unhealthy ones. How long are you on the ship for before going home? Both of them are typically on the ship for nine months at a time, but it depends on their contract. Technically, they're not employed by Royal Caribbean, but another company who then contracts them out to Royal Caribbean. This can be useful because it gives them the potential to work for multiple cruise lines. What are the biggest challenges of working on a boat? The job is even more sales based than usual. This is because passengers are leaving every seven days and new ones are coming on. Because of that, these guys have to make a personal connection very fast. This is already a challenge in a typical commercial gym, but on a cruise ship, it's even harder. Next up, I ask the question that I was probably more curious about than anything else. What is a typical day like for you? So a day where the boat is at sea might look a little 
little something like this. They're waking up around 6 a.m. The first class of the day that they have to teach, which is a stretching class, starts at 7 a.m. At 7.30 a.m., they're teaching an abs or core class. Then at 8, they're teaching some yoga. Then at 9 to 10, they're going to be teaching a spinning class. 10 to 11 a.m. is usually a break. Then from 11 to 12, typically they're doing a detox seminar. From 12 to 1, they'll typically be teaching a different seminar. It varies a little bit day to day. From 1 to 2, they're typically on break. And then from 2 to 3 p.m., they're typically teaching a posture seminar. After 3 p.m., often they're going to be teaching another class or two. They did mention that stretching classes can be popular later in the day as well. And they're also going to be doing the majority of their personal training sessions in those later times too. Our session right here took place at 6.30 at night. Now, oftentimes, these two trainers will divide some of those classes and seminars and sessions up that way they're both not constantly working. But that being said, both of them seem like they're incredibly busy during a typical day. In fact, that schedule was a little bit more hectic than what I was expecting, which led me to my next question. Damn, that's a long day. Are they always that crazy? Both of the guys said that some of the days aren't as busy as that, such as the ones where the boat is at a port. Sometimes those days where the boat is at an island are slower, and that's because most of the passengers who would be on the boat and potentially interested in services are adventuring around somewhere else. So basically days where the boat is at sea are typically going to be very busy like what you're seeing right here. And then days where the boat is at an island or a port, well those days are going to be significantly less busy. In fact oftentimes when the boat is at a port these guys have the option to get off the ship as well but it sounds like they don't go too crazy with that. They're both very focused on their work. Of course learning about all that made me curious about what these guys do for fun. And I feel like trainers aren't usually that good at answering the question, what do you do for fun? They did give me a very personal trainer-like answer. Anyways, they like to work out, play soccer, play basketball, party a little bit, all of that which can be done on the boat itself. They also like to do some stuff when they get off the boat too, like we just said. The next question I asked them was about some of the seminars they give, because that does sound like it's a very big part of the job when you're working on a cruise ship. What's your favorite seminar that you give? They both said the metabolism one is their favorite because it gives them the opportunity to sell more things. Detox packages, insoles for your shoes, personal training sessions, Pretty much anything they offer can be sold at that metabolism talk. And sales is a very big part of the job for these guys. I'd argue, and so would they, that their sales skills have to be better than what a trainer would have in a typical gym. Next, I asked if they did more one-on-one -on -one sessions or group sessions. And they both said it depends on the cruise, but usually they do more group sessions. To me, that just makes sense. Usually one-on-one -on -one training is more of a long-term thing. And when you're on one of these cruise ships, you're typically typically only going to be on there for a week or two. This is also why these seminars are such a big money maker for these cruise lines as well. It's easier to sell a product rather than training sessions, something that requires delayed gratification, when you're only in contact for a short period of time. That being said, sometimes these guys do a pretty substantial amount of training sessions in a week. It just varies a little bit more week to week than it would for a typical gym trainer. Are most of the clients you work with fairly fit or not? So as you might expect, Expect, they do see a pretty wide variety of clients. Just like in a typical gym, fit people come through, but plenty of less fit people also seek their training. Do you guys always do your sessions in this room, or can you use the larger gym area too? They both said it depends, but the majority of workouts that they do with clients are done in the room that we're using right now. Oftentimes they do incorporate the weights and machines in the main gym as well though, which if you've never been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, their gyms are surprisingly nice. They have a ton of different cardio machines, a good assortment of dumbbells, and they have some nice resistance training machines as well. And our last and least important question for these guys was, have you ever been asked to be filmed by YouTubers? To which they said, yes, vloggers do come through here and there, but it sounds like it's not something that happens too often. So what are our thoughts, myself and Alexis, on being a personal trainer on a cruise ship? Well, Blessing and Vinit were awesome. We had a great workout with them, and we can see why 
why they're successful doing what they do. I think both of us were initially surprised at how similar their job was to training in many other locations. They're constantly selling themselves and making connections with clients, which is what it's all about regardless of where you work. They also have to be pretty well versed in several areas of fitness to do their jobs. Giving seminars, conducting postural screenings, and helping clients with inserts are things that many trainers wouldn't be able or willing to do, but these guys do it well. No surprise, but the biggest difference between their job and a more typical trainer job in a gym is that any client they acquire is gone in one to two weeks. They have to make connections with new people fast, sell their services, and maintain that upbeat and positive attitude the whole time. This seems like it would be incredibly difficult, and Vanit and Blessing confirmed this to be true. They both said that they had seen many solid trainers come and go because they didn't have the social or sales skills to pull off what they do. I didn't want to get into it too much out of respect for these guys, but they did tell me that a large percentage of their pay is based on commission of sales. It sounds like you can do fairly well for yourself if you sell effectively. So I would say these cruise ship trainer jobs could be a unique and lucrative opportunity for the right trainer. It's probably only something that's worth considering though if you're good at the sales aspect of the job. So Vanit's Instagram is located down in the video description. Make sure to follow him and show him some love. Blessing doesn't have a page currently, and hey, maybe his life is better for not having one, but if he does make one, I'll share that one down in the video description as well. Both of these guys were great. Thanks again to both of them for helping us make this video. If you guys have any questions or comments on anything that we talked about today, make sure to leave those down below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because both of those things really do help the channel to grow. And that does allow me to create more free video content for all of you. Thanks for watching everyone. And until next time, stay sort of healthy.